the subject and the targets of Western invention resist that intervention, what they resist is what that intervention was seen as being about. And when you make gender part of the justification for that intervention, when you make feminism part of what the goal of that intervention was, you make feminism part of the target of the resistance. You make it that much more likely that resistance groups are going to be patriarchal, are going to be oppressive, and are going to bring about all the harms that opening opposition are worried about. That, as well as some good stuff about women and feminists in the West, is what I'm going to bring in extension. Before that, four points of rebuttal. Firstly, on the like heroic burden push that Ella just tried to do at deputy. Okay, so she was like, we don't need to defend all interventions. I was going to make that joke, so I'm glad she did and took the hit on how bad it was. Um, okay, the possibility that there are some interventions that are good for women is not enough unless feminists are way better at predicting the outcomes of interventions than everybody else. Because if they're not, if they're not, then by and large, for all the reasons that our opening have given and that we're going to expand on, then we, the like, most likely outcome, the most likely thing you should believe in advance about these interventions is that they will be bad for women, and they will be terrible, and they will increase the oppression of those women. So if that means that sometimes we oppose interventions which, in fact, as it happens, would have been good for women if they'd gone, if they'd gone on, then we're okay with that, because there's no way that the feminist movement was in a position to know that. Secondly, in rebuttal, okay, they tell us both that, uh, Malena and Ella, that removing gender from the discourse is bad. Firstly, this was a silly mischaracterization of what the feminist movement would be saying in these cases, as Matt points out in Point of Information. Because we're not saying that feminists, like women's rights, aren't important enough to justify intervention. We're saying that women's rights are very important, and it's possible for them to justify action, but it's just that they never do justify this kind of action, because this kind of action always makes those women better, or not always, right? See what I just said. But, like, by and large, makes those women so much worse off. So it's not downplaying the importance of gender. It's actually saying this is something that we should be so concerned about that it means we shouldn't go to war and make those women worse off. Secondly, as I'm going to extend on, having gender as part of the justification is an incredibly bad thing because it means pushback against that intervention becomes pushback against feminism. That's bad for women in, these, in those countries who are the most oppressed and who are the most, need, who are the most in need of liberation. Thirdly, they tell us about feminists and the armed forces. The first thing we'd say here is like, in itself, that's not, we're not that fussed about that. It's not that significant whether a feminist is now like able to join the armed forces. So to the extent that it's about like, no, take a seat, being, a, being able to critique, right, this is what you're going to say. They can still do that, right? We think feminists outside the armed forces can still say particular tactics are bad. They can still say that these are things we should do in order to mitigate the terribleness of this terrible war. That is not something that you're unable to do just because you opposed the war in the first instance. In fact, you're that much more able to do it because you are able to say this war was such a bad idea and we always told you it was, right. but here are things you can do to mitigate the terribleness that we warned you was coming. Thirdly, though, on this, we'd say that those power structures, the power structures of the army, are too far gone for a few feminists joining on the off chance that they might be able to help women by intervening to be worth it. Those power structures in the army are so patriarchal, so oriented to male domination, that we don't think they are able to be rescued from the inside just by putting some feminists there. Fourthly, Sorry, we're not going to touch this stuff too much, I'll take you guys in a moment. But like, this, the argument about cultural relativism in the top half, opening up wanted to dismiss by saying, well, there, there's some relativism, but this is always just about the key freedoms. That's not true. George W. Bush, and he got Laura Bush to do it as well, in the run-up to the Iraq war, we're talking about saving Iraqi women from having to wear the burqa. That is a huge presumption about what the goals of that movement are. A huge presumption which alienates those women and is in any case the wrong thing to do in itself. Okay, I'm going to move into extension. Adam. Opening governments are the armies will always stand out to support women, even when this isn't the case, that it's a sham. So how do you get any of the benefits you talk about in terms of dealing with gender and conflict when they're going to say that this is for women anywhere? Okay, we think that having the feminist movement articulating their opposition to this and saying, no, this, this is a sham justification, this war is not about saving women, means that it's not part of the discourse, not part of the justification in that same way. We think that's very clear. Okay. Let's talk about women and feminists in target countries. There's some rebuttal into open here. Because what they tell us at opening up is, well, we can, if we can end civil conflict and put a stop to that conflict quickly, then that's a huge benefit. The thing is, you can't. Mostly it goes on. Mostly it goes on with more sides, more troops, more weapons, more killing. We think that's so much worse for women, for all the reasons our opening tell you about and their opening tell you about, right? This con civil conflict doesn't just suddenly stop. Look at Afghanistan. Look at Iraq. That's not the way that these interventions work. 
Okay, but more than that, opening gov tell you that war is generally bad for women. What we're going to add in closing is that having gender as a justification specifically makes it worse. It creates an anti-Western pushback which makes those organisations, which, which by and large takes the form of patriarchal organisations. So, if you take a look at Boko Haram in Nigeria, that is an organisation which is fundamentally about pushing back against the West and against the norms of the West. What the form that that takes is criticising particularly women's education, particularly the rights of women, because that's seen as being tied up with the Western values that are being trying to be imposed on that country. No, thank you. So we think that that's even worse, right, when you go into that country stating that justification and your reason for being there and what that war that those people hate, that those people want to resist, is all about. So, what you do when you push back against an intervention that's trying to create a secular state in your Islamic country is try to create a brutal Islamic caliphate. What you do when you're trying to resist an intervention which came to bring feminism to your country, to liberate women from you, is push back against that. Push back against feminism and push back against that so hard that the kinds of rape and oppression that they're so worried about are much worse. Fighting intervention becomes fighting feminism and we think that's terrible. But secondly, in extension, let's talk about women and feminists in the West. Something we'd say here is that by and large, right, the, when feminist ideas are used to support justifications, it's not by feminists, it's by columnists who already support that law and want to use women's rights and brandish that in the face of people who oppose it and say, if you're real feminists, then why aren't you supporting this war? We think it is terrible for James Dellingpole and Andrew Bolt, none of you know who that is, but there's two Australians on the panel, so it's fine. <laughs> Bad to be dictated to by people who are just so opposed to everything that that feminist movement stands for. It's bad in itself. It's also bad to give feminist credibility to those people so that they can wield that in other foreign policy debates and in other debates about domestic policy. You shouldn't give them that credibility. But secondly, you say that you alienate minority groups from joining the feminist movement. Because when you paint this intervention, as it by and large is painted, as being about poor brown women needing saving by strong white men, while white women, white feminists, were able to liberate themselves, and you're pushing for goals, as I told you they were in Iraq, which those women don't want, then you, are, like, you alienate those women, because it is bad in itself to paint that demeaning and racist picture, but also because you push them away from the movement that is telling them what they want and isn't right about that, that is telling them that they're helpless when they're not. That means for minorities in these countries, they're pushed away from a movement when they are the most vulnerable and they are the ones who need that most. This makes things worse for women in the countries where we're intervening and in the countries that are doing the intervening, we're so proud to propose.